Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and today's video will be called Path Analysis. Uh, I should have included advantages in the title here as well uh, because the main focus of this video is going to be around the different sort of advantages that I've found. Um, and what I mean with path analysis is basically when you break down a map into separate parts, each of those parts will be from a starting point to an ending point and the different paths that the player is able to take will work sort of differently and the player will choose between going to different areas to make uh, the, to make or to play along with his current advantages and his current resources for instance it works better and it's more intuitive in a multiplayer map which is with a objective that is more obvious like if you have a, a spawn point in um, Team Fortress for instance and then you have the capture point and then you have sort of separate routes towards it. It works in a multiplayer map like this one where people spawn all over as well but yeah hopefully you will get it as I move along here with examples. Um, and the first things first is making things for a reason uh, is really important because once you have your reason you will be able to uh, basically focus your design and iterate upon it to make uh, to make the map play better while still keeping the original design and your original reasons intact. Let's say for instance you want a, a small map, uh, you want the player to use um, specific weapons and you want the map to play out sort of different from another bigger map that you've made before. So keeping the sort of basic design and your basic reasons intact throughout the development of a map is really important. Um, and once you start doing your analysis you will be able to work on iteration as well um, because once you have your advantages planned out, uh, let's say you have an area it's supposed to be low ground, it's supposed to be uh, it's, it has a rocket launcher and it has good cover, for instance. Uh, so once you have your area planned out with a few different advantages, um, you will be able to iterate upon that area, even remaking it from scratch, because as long as you keep your, uh, your basic design in mind, you will be able to uh, keep improving while still uh, not affecting the entire the entire map while remaking an area. Uh, and what I mean with it builds up an, a library of interactions is once you've figured out your design for the weapons that are available in your game, for instance if you have a grenade launcher that bounces or if you have rockets which do splash damage, um, the sort of interactions is basically how the specific weapon works in a separate area. So once you've figured out your uh, your basic interactions, you will be able to uh, or use them in more than one area across different maps or throughout an entire game. Because once you have the sort of distances between covers and stuff like that, um, the basic um, the basic size and the layouts will be much easier to accomplish. Um, so first things first is have a plan and I'm drawing on the wrong layer. So these are the advantages that I've kind of come up with while thinking about this. Uh, it's height, proximity, resources and cover which are kind of obvious from the titles uh, what I mean with them. And then I have ease of use and layout at the bottom here which are kind of harder to describe but once I get to the examples I'm hoping you understand what I mean. They kind of flow into one another because um, ease of use is basically a feature of having a specific layout but um, I kind of felt forced to have them both included and again as I bring up examples it will be more obvious and I will start moving on to the advantages. So the first advantage I will be talking about today is a height advantage and height is widely used and for good reasons because it creates interest, interest or more interesting environments. 
because if you're running around and it's just a flat 2D plane, it tends to be kind of boring. And flat maps in general tend to be boring. Um, it's obviously different depending on the game you're working on. Like the more realistic your game is, the less of a height or a height difference there tends to be because jumping from a high height in a realistic game will tend to break your legs. So depending on the realism of your game, heights will have to be uh, sort of smaller than if you're making a super unrealistic game. Um, so height is interesting. It also creates uh, halfway moves or one way moves where someone who is at the top can jump down and someone who is who is at the bottom can't jump up unless you have rocket jumps for instance. Um, so they allow the player who is higher up a greater degree of freedom and um, they also provide sort of super small cover from the very edge of the platform here and they also make it sort of easier if you're having someone at the top someone at the bottom and you're firing a splash damage weapon like a rocket launcher for instance the one at the top will be able to hit uh, an area of effect and the guy at the bottom will basically have to hit the exact hitbox of the guy at the top so it provides vision it provides freedom of movement and it provides some small amount of cover and extra damage i suppose depending on the design of your weapons, for instance. So this is just the very basic height uh, height difference. Uh, in the next example here, I have a sort of two-step change. So this provides, obviously, a smaller difference between the first and second levels. And yes, I know that someone, they probably can jump up there, but, but whatever. Uh, so it provides a smaller difference. It also provides uh, movement from the bottom uh, let's say it does anyway so um, someone who has who's at the very bottom can choose to jump up you can have it uh, in this case it's across the entire room but you can have like uh, a box in the corner or you can choose to have a set of stairs um, let's say you have a set of stairs over here and then the next one is up here so you have to move like that um, there are many ways to create multi-layered uh, rooms and you just have to keep uh, keep in mind that you can always change it depending on if you want the player to be able to jump up or if you want the player to um, to be forced to move along the stairs and stuff like that but designing rooms that are multi-layered is important because it creates uh, a lot more dynamic environments than just having rooms that are on a separate level and then you have stairs sort of between the rooms. Um, so in my next example I have the slope which is uh, interesting for another reason because uh, if you have the splash damage weapons again shooting across the slope will tend to reduce the effectivity of height advantage on splash damage weapons because the the window or the angle that you can hit while making uh, or hitting the opponent here is much smaller on a sloping surface than it is on uh, on the very flat surfaces here. Uh, so this both provides a smaller cover for the guy at the top and sort of better evasive skills for the guy at the bottom, I suppose. This obviously depends on the angle of your slope. If it's super shallow or whatever you call it um, it obviously resembles the uh, the first example more than if you have the super long uh, slope that i have in this example here um, then i also have composites within a room which it obviously depends on how you make the layout but let's say in this example you want to get to point a up here uh, and there's a door over here which you think maybe maybe a player will move in through this room or move in to get the get to point a as well or maybe he comes from the top here you might if you have a close combat weapon you might want to take the sort of closer route and if you have a long distance weapon like a railgun or sniper rifle or whatever you might want to take the the longer route here and depending on how you place 
uh, let's say you have a health kit over here, you have some ammo over here, which is part of the resources. We don't, I'll get to that later. Um, so depending on sort of the layout of the room and depending on the weapons that the player already has, um, designing rooms that have different height variations um, will make the game more dynamic and will make separate areas more interesting. Instead of choosing like from the longer routes that span an entire map, you'll have to choose within the rooms as well. Um, I actually made a bad example here because I'd recommend to start out with solid shapes instead of these sort of bridge areas because they they tend to sort of uh, make your design a bit too complicated if you start out with uh, too much height variations. So start out sticking to uh, different heights but keeping the blocks uh, so that you can't run below another playable area basically. Um, you can do that later but start with the simple shapes and then move on to the more difficult ones uh, when you start figuring out what you want your map to look like. I wouldn't recommend making bridges at an early concept like this one. Um, the next example I have, or the next sort of subgenre of advantages, is proximity. Um, this one is kind of obvious, but you still have to keep a few different uh, things in mind. Let's say at the start here, we are moving from point yeah, the point at the bottom to uh, to the top. The route in the middle here is obviously the the easiest one. Um, then you have the sort of more advanced one that doesn't show up very well because of how the Unreal renders stuff. But that's um, obviously a more complex shape. And then at the bottom here, um, this is supposed to be uh, teleporters, just to show you how how games might influence or be influenced by teleporters. So the travel time, let's say in this case that the travel time is the same uh, no matter which one of the routes you pick. Uh, this then will or this will then be influenced still by things like strafe jumping for instance in Quake uh, where the the more open route will allow you to move faster because strafe jumping like around corners is harder and maybe you can't keep your momentum through teleporters or something like that. Uh, so proximity is not just the exact distance from two points to another. It also it's also influenced by things like speed jumping. You might say that um, in this next example here, let's say you have an elevator here. Maybe you can choose between uh, waiting for the elevator to move up and down where you might be an easier target, or you might want to choose going along the side and jumping up to the top, or you might want to choose uh, rocket jumping from the bottom here, so it's a big explosion, and then you fly up. Uh, so in this case, you sacrifice health. Uh, in this case, you might be vulnerable, or you might be open. That's easier to write. Uh, and in the last one, you might sacrifice time uh, because it takes longer. Uh, so just because um, the distance from one point to another point is a certain uh, certain distance, the time required to travel from uh, one point to another might be different depending on how your game is designed, if you allow rocket jumping or strafe jumping, uh, how fast your elevators move, how dangerous it is to be standing still um, for a certain amount of time and things like that. So height is sort of more uh, more easily manageable because it you, you will have to incorporate it into any good design basically. Uh, proximity is more important once you start building rooms where you can choose between routes basically. Uh, within the route it's obviously uh, sort of uh, once you pick uh, a certain route like in the last example uh, let's say you have a room at the bottom here where you can choose between a b and c once you've made your choice you will obviously not choose to stop in the middle and then run back because the distance tends to stay the exact same no matter what you do um, so that's 
uh, height and proximity. So the next sort of advantage I will be talking about is resources. Um, this changes a lot depending on the game you're designing for, obviously. For instance, in Team Fortress 2, the only pickups are health and ammo, while in something like Unreal, you can pick up weapons as well as power-ups like quad damage and, uh, or I think it's just double damage in Unreal and quad in Quake, but whatever. Um, so depending on the strength of your pickups, you will obviously have to change the um, the layout of the rooms where the pickup is spawning, as well as uh, sort of create smaller uh, sub paths, if you like, um, to create something like a more difficult area for a very powerful power up. Uh, let's say, for instance, you start and you have a star power up. Yeah, whatever. Um, once you just start running along the basic path here, you can just make a small detour, pick it up and move on. But if you have a more powerful pickup, you can start designing rooms that are sort of like this, uh, a dead end, that it forces the player to make more of a decision if they want to uh, go into the room here. And basically, if they think that the advantage of picking up the power up is stronger than the disadvantage of being stuck in a dead end. Um, so more power requires more thought when designing and depending on if you want the room to be powerful, let's say you have a weapon here, it, it, it's an arrow, whatever. Um, so if you want the room to be designed to have the arrow weapon to be good in the room or do you want it to be more powerful in another part of the map entirely. Um, in a 1v1 situation for instance if you want the player who has the advantage and kills the other one um, to be able to run around the map pick up weapons and be stronger for it uh, because he has uh, the arrow weapon which is useful over here he has the star weapon which is useful in this part of the map for instance um, so when you start designing a map to ha to make the uh, the superior player have a stronger advantage uh, you can start running into really sort of slippery slope situations so a better thing is to design weapons to be useful in the room where they're pick up, picked up so that the player who reaches the weapon first uh, is the one who will be in the stronger situation. Um, this kind of runs into proximity and stuff like that, but I just thought I'd add it. Um, you can also add these sort of situations where you sacrifice high ground basically to pick up a weapon, and it also creates a more spammable position for someone who has a rocket launcher or a grenade launcher, for instance. Um, so if you want to, you can add a sort of lower ground for the pickup. You can also add it to high ground. Uh, basically, if you want players to be able to see the pickup as well as see anyone who tries to go for it from a long distance. So if you have hit scan weapons like rail guns, for instance, having something on high ground can actually be a disadvantage because players are more visible from all different kinds of angles. And the next sort of advantage I'll be talking about is cover and visibility, which kind of run into one another. Um, so the first case here is the low wall, which uh, compared to the high wall at the side, let's say a player is something like this size. So the low wall adds um, sort of partial cover, let's say a third to half of a player model. Um, it also works better on high ground, obviously, because the angle of attack uh, for someone on the low ground becomes worse as the player either moves higher up or moves further into the uh, the map here. Um, so once you start getting away from the edge, you will have better cover from uh, the low ground, but you will also have worse cover from weapons that do splash damage towards the wall, for instance. So if you have something like a low wall and then you have the wall, uh, let's say it looks something like this, um, this basically removes all splash damage from the wall while still keeping the player 
limited to just moving in the sort of box thingy that's defined by the low wall here. Um, so low walls also um, sort of uh, get grenades stuck in the uh, in the bump area or the playable area, what you want to call it, at the bottom here. So someone who has a grenade weapon will be stronger against someone who has low cover because uh, even though you might might hit the actual hitbox of the player, the splash damage from the weapon is tends to be more powerful on grenade type weapons and some grenade weapons don't even explode when you hit the player so that's it for low walls then you have your high walls um, it's basically the same um, except that players can hide behind them uh, the grenades bounce off of walls instead and uh, given that the players have partial cover they can choose to either uh, run along the entire length here or they can choose to stop and hide because they want to fire upon something so instead of having partial cover uh, height wise like the uh, the low cover here you have partial cover uh, sideways uh, like here you can basically obscure something like uh, something like the low wall like a third of the player model or something like that depending on your weapon uh, if it's placed in the center of the model or the right side or whatever um, so partial high cover walls uh, tend to function much like the partial uh, low cover ones except only for uh, part of any given path uh, then you also have high walls with vision uh, let's pretend that uh, there's actual glass here um, vision is uh, very or the importance of vision is very different depending on the game you're playing because something like a multiplayer game where you can influence your teammates let's say you can ping um, ping player positions I think you can do this in battlefield for instance that allows you to mark them so they show up on your ally uh, ally minimap and the allied map as well uh, that makes vision more important uh, so if you can stay in cover and be entirely protected um, being in a forward position with good vision can add a lot to your team while in a sort of 1v1 situation vision isn't as important because you tend to give away as much information to your enemy as you get from seeing him so unless you manage to be uh, up in the window here and see him while he doesn't see you um, it, it's less important in these sort of 1v1 situations but it can still be a good thing to have uh, these visibility zones because it allows players to try and make uh, sneaky plays let's say uh, player A up at the top here he's moving along this side and then he shows himself to player B who's at the bottom here who's going this way he can turn around and try and make a sneaky play and catch up to the other guy or he can try and fake things so visibility is tricky but I'd still recommend having some zones at least where uh, you can see through uh, through these sort of areas because it creates a bit of sneakier gameplay um, for the next step here I have partial cover uh, and this time it's high cover but it's pillars which basically provide uh, sort of uh, the thing with these sort of pillars is that they create pretty good cover for someone who is moving along the side here and as you can see it's um, it's less powerful against someone who is uh, straight across the pillars and it's more powerful against someone who has uh, let's say they have a railgun again and they're trying to fire at someone from a longer distance so if you're running along the uh, pillars here at the top you will have better cover as you get further into the path here and if you want to stop and fight you can stop and you're basically strafing back and forward behind these pillars here and then you can choose which way to fire on uh, I have another uh, different example here which is uh, thinner walls basically 
and here you can see the effect of having better cover as you go along is much uh, the effect is much bigger because as you can see at the furthest away uh, blocks here um, the cover starts becoming complete like the player who's once you reach this spot here you will be behind total cover against someone who is uh, very far or has a very steep angle what you call it um, while you will have much less uh, cover from someone who's straight across so I don't see this a lot but I think it's kind of interesting cover wise uh, because it allows players to kind of uh, let's say both uh, or one player wants to really fight then he has to keep moving along the sides here and one player doesn't want to fight so he tries to make the maximum angle possible uh, I think it's a pretty cool thing keep it in mind um, for the next example here I have uh, stairs and low cover stairs uh, basically make things like grenades more powerful because even as someone is moving up the top here um, grenades will tend to not just get stuck between the wall and the low wall here they will also tend to flow downwards um, so making grenades even more powerful uh, even if you have uh, complete cover like in this case here um, the grenades will probably not make much of a difference but this will provide better cover against things like uh, yeah the rail guns and the hit scan weapons for instance uh, compared to the low cover here which against someone who is up on the high ground uh, will tend to provide very little or no cover at all at the low lowest uh, well if you start moving up towards the top here you will be able to have better cover against someone who is on the low ground again so uh, cover on any sort of sloping or angled part of your map will be very dependent on what part of the map that your opponent is on um, so designing things for these sort of uh, sloping areas becomes a little more tricky depending on how the rest of your area looks but um, high cover is again mostly interesting because it allows player to, players to turn around out of visibility uh, so unless you have like open windows here that allows for perfect information any sort of player who goes into the uh, in behind the cover here uh, will be hidden until he chooses to peek out either at the bottom or at the top and depending on what sort of visibility you have um, the players will probably tend to stick mostly to moving in one direction or another because they want to get from point A to point B so that's it for cover and visibility and the next group of advantages is ease of use uh, again, like I said before, this one is kind of tricky because it tends to flow into the path layout group, but uh, I will run through a few different examples here and hopefully you'll get what I mean. Uh, so one of the examples for the ease of use setting, oops, I don't have my brush, um, is basically things like jumping or anything that takes attention away from actually fighting your opponent. Uh, so if you have things like jumping on top of things and then onto something else um, this forces the player to be much more aware of where the avatar is in the game world compared to just running across the the bottom of a, uh, a room here and things like the very high pillars like on um, DM6 in Quake 3 uh, jumping back and forth between things let's say they are uh, instead of being this high they are just sort of lower things and then you have lava flowing along the middle so uh, missing a jump will kill you um, this will make things even more focused upon uh, being more like a jumping puzzle instead of being a straight up fighter game um, so once you start getting away from the sort of flat floor uh, designs and moving towards more complex movement patterns uh, you will be running into some issues if you're 
if you create like entire maps doing this but if you have a certain path that you don't want to be extremely powerful um, you can do some sort of ease of use or um, yeah adding difficulty to movement and not just the sort of aiming difficulty that most 3d shooters around or revolve around um, so the next issue that I have in the ease of use group is uh, facing. Um, I'll just write it up here. So depending on which way you're facing while moving along a certain route, you can choose to either increase or decrease the sort of uh, player skill required to do or to take that route. Let's say, for instance, um, there's a door up here at the top, and players start moving from this direction at the bottom here. They just run straight forward while looking straight ahead, then up the stairs, still looking straight ahead, and then they fight the guy over here. This is the sort of easiest solution. If you instead add the top door uh, to be over here, and still have an enemy standing here, um, players will be have to be better at the map uh, if they want to move up here and then around the corner. Yeah, it's extremely wide in this area, but I'm just using it as a demonstration. Um, so once a player starts having to move in another direction than he's facing, uh, you will actually tend to uh, increase the threshold of uh, player skill that is required. So players can, uh, once you become better, you will actually notice a big difference, but you will also tend to make beginners playing your map worse compared to more experienced players. So you can choose if you want to uh, sort of raise the skill cap or if you want to keep it at a low level. But once you start creating paths that the player uh, will have to strafe around or they will have to back away from someone, uh, you will also have to be extremely good at clipping so players don't run into uh, detailing. Let's say, for instance, you have a sort of pillar sticking out a bit here, um, or you have something uh, along the edge like a fence or a railing. Uh, once players start uh, backing and running into either running into very small details or running into these big block blocking things, uh, players tend to get extremely frustrated. So once you get into these uh, facing issues, you'll have to keep your clipping at a real perfect level and do lots of playtesting because running into things while backing up is terrible. Uh, it happens a few times in Team Fortress 2 actually. Um, the next slide here is about uh, vision and elevators as well as it works for things like jumps and um, stuff like that as well. So. At the middle here, you have an elevator. Um, again, the same example as I had before. Uh, so if you choose to get on it, you can already see if there's any enemy at the top here. Well, if you take this really dark elevator um, and try to go up it, you have no idea if there's someone standing just waiting for you at the top. So this becomes more of an issue once you die uh, more easily basically. So someone can just camp at the top here and wait for people to get up the elevator. Uh, it's the same if you have uh, jumps that are hard. Let's say for instance uh, the player at the top here is moving this way um, and then you have a path at the bottom uh, making him go back basically and then you have walls around the edge. So once you jump into the hole you're basically committed because you have no way of uh, changing your mind and going back up if you find something scary. So if you have no visibility, a jump like this is scarier because uh, you can basically die instantly if you find something bad at the bottom. Uh, so if you want to, you can make uh, the floor transparent uh, like it is on Two Fort, for instance, in Team Fortress 2. Um, so players um, players can rocket jump back up again it's one way of making it sort of easier or you can just choose to uh, either have an open area around the hole so players can strafe it all around and 
just check it out depending on if you want it to be a scarier jump to make because there's a more powerful uh, pickup at the bottom for instance or if you want it to be um, yeah if it has just a general pickup it might not be that important so players can be allowed to strafe around um, and the last category I have today is path layout um, this has some uh, it's very detailed and it's about very small stuff compared to things like uh, height and proximity but I just included it because I thought it's it's still kind of important for instance uh, in the first example here what I have is a very narrow pathway which means that uh, anyone who goes into it is more likely to not be able to strafe away for instance uh, compared to having it the entire width of the the room here or the possible width um, this this will affect just uh, strafing away from things as well as splash damage weapons and if you have something like the uh, the flak grenade in Unreal it will bounce off of all the walls and do even more damage and kill people easier so uh, oops so path layout is important uh, but you can also say that uh, depending on if you're chasing someone or if you're the one being chased you will obviously want the path to look differently so keep that in mind um, if I bring up the the old example again here that I did for proximity um, if you're being chased by someone with a, um, a railgun for instance you will want to run along this uh, the left side so again if even if proximity is stronger or it's a stronger advantage in the middle one you will want to take the left side because it provides more cover for instance and just like um, path layout is or the width of the path is important uh, things like door uh, width is also important because it provides more or less uh, possibilities let's say again this looks something like a spawn area in team fortress 2 um, if uh, player a out here can't player a if he can't move into one of these doors having more than one door compared to having just a door in the middle here will provide stronger flanking opportunities for anyone who is uh, inside the room and it will also provide um, it will provide a more interesting room if someone is or if players are allowed to move into uh, both of them as well uh, I know that was a terrible sentence but I will try to explain what I meant um, if someone is being chased let's say player a again if he runs along the left side here and someone is kind of far behind him he can choose to either go uh, try to go ring around the rosy or he can choose to run in through the secret door over here or he can choose to run around the corner and then stand here and wait um, so if you don't have vision creating areas that allow for more complex uh, interactions will still um, be a meaningful addition to the layout um, uh, I have it again here um, multiple paths leading away from a jump let's say for instance you're doing a blind jump from the top here um, if you are doing a blind jump and someone is following you being able to run in more than one direction will obviously uh, create a much different situation from uh, jumping down and then being stuck in a uh, in a one-way corridor um, so having several different paths leading to any separate area will provide uh, more paths uh, obviously but it will also provide more comp complexity uh, so being able to be on the high ground and choosing more paths is more important as your design becomes more complex and uh, has more options leading away from any given point um, I also have the example of turns versus the 90 degree curves here um, so having the turn here uh, the soft turn at the bottom will provide more vision uh, for at any given point you will have a longer sight line than if you're standing at the very edge here of the here uh, the corner and you can only see this far or if you're standing over here you can only see 
something like 45 degrees. But in a curve, um, you'll have better vision. So depending on if you want players to be uh, sort of further away from another, or if you want players to run around the corner in a very narrow corridor and then finding each other at the very edge, um, this will, it's a minor thing, but path layout is, again, as I said, it's small, but it adds up. Um, and that's actually it for all of the advantages I had in my slides today. Um, I will just bring up the, whoops, not that one. I will bring up the, have a plan slide again. There we go. Um, so now that I've run through the different sort of advantages, um, what I want you to do is basically pick a few of them and focus on those for any given path so that players will have to be, uh, they will have to make more interesting decisions because creating interesting decisions is basically what any sort of game decision or a game design is about. So run through your different advantages, create your maps, and then once you have your basic layout, refine the advantages and refine your design so that um, your maps will be more different at the different parts of the map than just being all the same all the way and having players be forced to make weapon decisions and other sorts of decisions depending on what part of the map they're currently on and what part of the map they want to go to. Um, this is all for today. I hope you enjoy the video. Like if you liked it and if you didn't just tell me why you didn't. <laughs> It's very long and it's kind of complicated, but I'm hoping you get some, something out of this anyway. And my voice is really starting to break up now. So thanks for me. Over and out.